Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to part 2 of my new series aimed at helping people make a start at processing using PixInsight. During the first video in this series we tackled some one shot colour data of M45, the Pleiades cluster. For this one, part 2, we're actually going to be working on some mono LRGB data of a galaxy instead. So we're going to be working on M51, the Whirlpool. Now just like in the first video in this series, you will need to have a few different things downloaded and installed and ready to go if you'd like to follow along and work alongside me uh, as I go through this tutorial. Firstly, you'll need the Easy Processing Suite by Dark Archon. It's a really fantastic set of tools and I think everybody should be using this if you aren't already. It's an extremely simple installation and it's completely free. The link to this is going to be in the description box down below and also all of the instructions uh, on installation are included on that site too. Secondly, you're going to need either Starnet 2, which is free, or Star Exterminator, that's the one that I'll be using. They both do effectively the same job, so don't worry too much about which one you have or even if you have both in some cases. It doesn't really matter, but you will need at the very least one of them installed and working and ready to go. Again. All the links to these and the instructions for installation actually are going to be found on the respective websites linked in the description box down below. Thirdly and thankfully finally all you're going to need aside from those is the actual data to work along with and inside the folder that I've created it's just a little zipped file available from my Google Drive. You're also going to find a .xpsm file and that includes a few different tools available already within PixInsight and also a few extras that my friend Bill Blanchard created, which I think are the best tools in the business. Quite honestly, they're all completely free, and I just decided to bundle them into this because I think anybody getting started in PixInsight should really start using these tools right from day one. So at this point, if you've got all of that downloaded and ready already, that's fantastic. We can move straight on. But if you haven't, now's the time to pause the video real quick and go take care of those little tasks and come back when you're ready. Alright guys, so here we are at the start of the tutorial and if you've got the data downloaded already that I provided, that zipped file, once you've unpacked it and found out what's inside you should see there's an M51 L, R, G and B file and also this one here called Tutorial Process Icons. Now if you've already got PixInsight open and ready then at this point you can simply either Control A and select all or just drag and drop them all. Onto anywhere you like on the PixInsight desktop and it should load everything in for you just like this. So we've got all of the channels up at the top left right here all stacked on top of one another, uh, cascaded. And over on the right in my case we've got all of these tools. So the ones are pre-selected effectively and included as part of this package. Um, you'll probably notice those of you who are paying a lot of attention to this video that I've got a couple of extra icons. So I've got Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator. So for those of you using the free software options for this tutorial, uh, that is to say the Easy Denoise, uh, part of the Easy D Easy Processing Suite, should I say, <laughs> uh, and StarNet2, then you'll basically just swap these out with that part. So, at this point now we can actually make a start on processing everything. It's all loaded in and ready to go. So the thing that I like to do to make a start is arrange the data. So I'm going to select the luminance, as that's the one I want in the top left. And I'm going to click Window and Tile Windows. That's going to bring everything into view. Just like this, as you can see, we've got four files and it's put them all nicely and evenly spaced on the workspace. So now the first thing you're probably going to notice, as before, we can't see anything. So we're going to need to apply a screen stretch. You've got a couple of options for this. You can either select the tool up at the top there, that's going to apply an STF, or you can do as I tend to do and open up the STF tool itself and just select each one and press that little icon right there. It looks like a nuclear waste symbol or something. And go ahead and get all of these SDF'd. Uh, that is to say the data is completely linear still, it's just a screen stretch that's being applied so that we can take a look at what the underlying data looks like without making really any changes to it whatsoever, which is important as some processes um, really do have to be performed while the data is still in a linear state. So that is to say just unstretched. So. Let's start analysing this data. The first thing that's standing out to me uh, is that there's a lot of stacking artefacts. So all this data of course is LRGB and it was all registered to the L files, they were the strongest ones. And inevitably that's going to lead to having things like this, black bars, 
um, stacking up artifacts along the edges. So if we just zoom in a little bit and show you what I'm talking about, you can see it's very, very noisy data where there's only a couple of frames covering that part. But the most robust part of the data, the intersection of them all, that's the part that we're going to want to keep. So the first thing to do is to get these now uh, all cropped to the exact same dimensions. So again, I'm going to use my reference frame in this case, the luminance that's in the top left and open the dynamic crop tool. A window should pop up like this. And effectively, if you can't see everything on your screen just yet, you're going to want to use the scroll wheel and just zoom out until you can see an overview of the whole image. And you should notice the edge of it is now glowing a slight white. So you can take a look at the corners and just by holding the left click on your mouse, kind of drag it in until the point where you're happy that you've gotten rid of all of the stacking artifacts. And then do the same from the opposing corner and roughly in effectively two movements if you are better with a mouse than I am. <laughs> then uh, you're going to have gotten rid of all of those stacking artifacts. So that looks pretty good. You may note that I've taken the time there to make sure that the crop is actually landing centered on the middle of the M51 Galaxy. You don't have to do that. If you want to preserve more of the background image, that's absolutely fine. That's your choice. But I think it'll make a nicer framing if the center of the frame lands on the center of the galaxy. In this case, now, at this point, what you don't want to do is just hit that tink box. What you instead want to do is take this uh, kind of crop that we've just defined and drag and drop it onto all the other channels first. So we've just done the green, now the blue, the red. And at this point now you can hit the tick box and that's going to ensure that everything is cropped to the exact same dimensions, which is really important when you're trying to use things like the LRGB combination tool. It'll throw up errors if everything isn't already the same size effectively. So we're done with that tool. We can close that down now at this point and start moving on with the rest of the process. So the data is actually pretty flat. It's not very badly gradiented, but there is some gradient and it'd be nice to try and get rid of it now. And at the same time, perhaps describe a usage case for DBE, that's dynamic background extraction. So those of you who watched the Pleiades tutorial, you may have noticed we used ABE, that's Automatic Background Extraction. It tends to work great, and generally speaking, I would always try ABE at the very least first, uh, because it saves you a lot of manpower, a lot of work. So we're just going to give it a go just to show you uh, what it would look like. So the target image correction, as usual, a subtraction, and I'm going to discard the background model. We're not going to need that, but I won't replace the, tar uh, the target image in this case. I'm going to leave it at a function degree of 4 because that's where it all defaults to and I'm just going to show you why sometimes ABE isn't the best option. So we'll just quickly apply an STF to that. And you can probably see right away uh, we've got overcorrections, undercorrections. It's a mess. It's not really usable. So rather than spending ages trying to dial that in, which is often a complete pain and sometimes a bit of an insurmountable task at worst, uh, when you've got a large foreground object in the image, like we've got right here, most of the frame is dominated by M51. It sometimes prevents AB from working very well, I find, which is bringing us neatly on to a perfect usage case for DBE, that's dynamic background extraction. So, whichever image you have selected uh, when you open the DBE tool, that's the one that's going to become a dynamic window like this. So you can see for me, it's the luminance window. At this point, you can open target image correction. Again, just like an ABE, uh, generally a subtraction is the thing I'd try first. I'm going to discard the background model. And in this case, you don't have to do this at home. And in fact, I'd advise you don't until you're more confident we're using this tool and you've tried it a good few times. Don't replace the target image just yet. But I'm going to do it for the sake of keeping this tutorial streamlined because I'm confident it's going to work out. Now, underneath sample generation right there, you're going to hit generate and leaving everything else at defaults for the sake of simplicity here, you can see it's just created a bunch of different kind of uh, little pips on this. This is going to try and teach you what the background model looks like. Now, what you've probably just seen me do there is I've dragged one of these and moved it away from some background data. So you can see M51 has a tail that kind of kicks off. Um, out into the space uh, around the galaxy like that and I don't want that sampling as background because simply it's not it's actually part of the data that we want to preserve in this image so just taking a little bit of a careful look at your image and where db wants to place those uh, samples if you find any are in problematic positions 
simply mouse over them and h grab and hold them uh, with the left click button just move them out of the way so they're not in any danger of causing problems with your background model you'll notice there are some sparse points where it won't place the uh, the model points so I'm just gonna fill them in just with the left click mouse button anywhere around where I'm not pointing on stars so you can see there's one actually there that's on a background galaxy I'm just gonna move that off and I think at that we're gonna have a pretty robust model uh, and we can just go ahead and try it so I'll click the tick box re stretch the image with STF there and that looks immediately improved the backgrounds had all that gradient taken away and now all the dust around the galaxy is showing up uh, a lot clearer I would say now the boring part is coming up where we have to close this down and perform this exact same task really for all the rest of the images so we're going to do once again, I'm just going to talk you straight through the thing. So open DBE while your second channel is selected. In this case for me, I've chose red. A subtraction. Discard the background model. Again, like we mentioned, optionally, you can replace the target image. If you do get it wrong, it doesn't really, really matter. You can just close the tool as you can't close a dynamic window without closing it first. Right click the image and undo uh, and then try again effectively. But as I said, I'm confident this should work. I hope it does. Um, that'd be kind of embarrassing if it didn't. I'm going to go ahead, fill in any blanks. And you don't have to go too crazy with this, just as long as you're not selecting stars and data they actually want to keep. So that looks reasonable. I'll just move that one away. Yeah, that's not too bad. Go ahead and apply. Re-STF that image, and as you can see, it's worked well we've gotten rid of that background gradient once again and it's the same process just repeated so uh, i'll spare you for having to sit through this and we'll pick up in just a moment once i've gone through and gotten rid of uh, the gradient from these green and blue channels all right guys so as you can see i've just got finished there with the green and the blue everything's at its background extracted uh, and as we mentioned before everything's also been cropped so now the next thing that i'd usually like to do on an lrgb image like this is pass it all through linear fit and what that tool is going to do if you just click on it on the right hand side right here is effectively going to take a reference image whichever one you point it to so in this case you're going to click um select <laughs> the little uh, selection window there and point it to the reference which in this case is going to be luminance as it usually would be and then you're going to drag and drop it across to all the rest of the channels. You'll need to give these another auto stretch in a moment to take a look at the difference. But what it tries to do is match the background and mid-tone levels, if you like, of the reference image with all of the other images that you're uh, dropping that tool onto. So, go ahead. We've just uh, done the linear fit on all of these. It looks like it's done a pretty good job there. We're going to trust that it's worked out okay. And that's a really quick process, as you can see, but it is worth performing nonetheless. Now, we've hit kind of a forking point in the uh, in the tutorial right here. So if you are using free software, as I mentioned, Easy Denoise, that particular suite, then you are going to want to apply that to each of these images right now at this point in processing. So I'll just talk you through that as if I'm going to do it. So it'd be script easy processing suite and easy denoise so i'd be starting on the luminance here make double sure that tgv settings here run tgv denoise is ticked otherwise the tool won't work at all and then once you've got that selected on the correct image you just hit run easy denoise and wait a few moments it shouldn't take too long on these images as the dimensions of them aren't that massive uh, so it won't be too much of a challenge to process but effectively you just do that on each of these images uh, and then we can move on to the next part of the processing tutorial so if you're doing that by all means pause the video now and pick up with me in just a moment's time um, but it is worth mentioning as well that some people only like to denoise the luminance image because that's the one that's going to do all the really heavy lifting when actually combining these channels and making a color image uh, but I think it is worth taking the time to denoise your red, your green and your blue as well um, in my own tests that I've performed doing this both ways you do get a finer end result by denoising everything beforehand now I'm not going to be using that tool I'm trying to save a little bit of time uh, so I'm instead going to use noise exterminator for the next step but if you're just picking up on this now after performing easy denoise 
then the next thing you're going to want to do is take it from being in a linear phase, which is when you should be denoising with that tool, into a non-linear phase ready for combination. And to do that, you're going to do that with script, easy processing suite again, and use easy soft stretch. I really like this tool. It does apply the kind of stretch I'd take the time to uh, figure out myself manually, only it does it in just moments. So it's a great time saver and you know it couldn't be simpler to use. As you can see right here, I'm just selecting the target image that I want. In this case, I've just highlighted green, script, easy processing suite, easy soft stretch. Everything completely at defaults for the sake of this. And that's it. The image is now non-linear. It has been stretched. Once again for the blue, script, easy processing suite, easy soft stretch, and run. And that's it. All of these images are now in the non-linear phase of processing. Now, before we combine everything together, uh, I am going to apply a small amount of sharpening to this luminous image again, because that really is going to do all the heavy lifting for the image. This is the one that we want to pay most of our processing attention to. So I'm going to use another script for this. So this is script, utilities and ADV sharpening. That's advanced sharpening. So again, just all at defaults with the luminous image selected. I'm going to run that and we'll take a look at the result and you can see if I just scroll right in and zoom up on the core of this galaxy and undo and redo a couple of times while you pay attention to that window, you can see it's really brought out a lot of that fine kind of, I think the word is flocculent core detail into this galaxy. It looks incredible, I think. Um, I'm more than happy to move on at that. We can do any final sharpening a little bit later on. It'll be a good opportunity to explain some masking. Do you see that really the next phase of processing at this point now is going to be an LRGB combination. So again, you should see this tool over on the right hand side for you already uh, loaded in. You're going to point this first to the L file. So you can select the little window on the right hand side, point it to the correct file and click OK. Same thing for the red. Selection window, choose the red, choose the green and the blue and you can see everything's now loaded into the correct one so L, luminous, R, red, so forth. You get the idea. Now one thing I used to like to do historically with this tool when processing mono data would be to apply chrominance noise reduction at this point however I've kind of recently since kind of fell out of love with that particular uh, tool as I think it nukes a lot of fine kind of nebula detail inside these galaxies so when we apply this in just a second here and it creates the LRGB image, if we'd have done the same thing with LRGB, uh, sorry, chrominous noise reduction turned on, you'd notice that a lot of these HA little regions here, these nebula inside the other galaxy, would have been kind of flattened out and removed almost from the, the having any presence in the image. I don't use it anymore for that reason. Uh, and as I mentioned, if you've used easy denoise already, your image will have less noise than this. Uh, but as I also explained, I'm going to just denoise it right now using Noise Exterminator. If you're using this tool, this is how I'm going to apply it. So it is pretty noisy. So we want a fairly strong application, about 75%. I think it's going to do the job. And I'll leave the detail slider alone in this case. It shouldn't take too long as it's only a small image, as I mentioned. All right, that's finished, and it's done a really fantastic job of denoising. Um, again, if I just go back and forth a couple of times there, you can probably see the effect that that's had in the background is just astounding. All that mottled uh, noise has just been washed away. Looks great. Um, so now, something else has become apparent. So we didn't fully flatten all of these uh, other images using excuse me, uh, the DBE tool. So I'm going to now take another pass with DBE and try and soften out some of these very slight gradients that are appearing in the background. This is nitpicky of me, I'll admit, but why not show uh, what I'd usually do. So I'm going to go ahead, open up DBE, and I'm going to hope to kind of neutralize and send back that background just another step. So just like before, when we were doing it on the individual mono channels, I'm going to open up a subtraction, discard the background model, 
and in this case I will allow it to uh, not replace the target image it'll create a new one and we can compare them side by side just for the sake of this uh, video I've generated some samples you can see it's a little bit more confident with where it's placed um, sample points so I've got less work to do filling in the gaps on this particular uh, image example that looks pretty good I think the only ones that are any little bit close are just those few there I think we can go ahead and give it a try at that so I'll just apply and you can see it's really getting brought the galaxy forwards in this image maybe a little bit too much but it doesn't really matter for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna go with it and just uh, continue ahead now processing this image what it has done is what I wanted it to do uh, in terms of getting rid of that background um, not so much a gradient but kind of a uh, just a gentle color shift across the image so I am going to continue processing this one now and I think again if we analyze the problems in the image straight away uh, I think the one that stands out to me right now is it's it's barely a color image uh, at all it looks almost monochromatic in its display right here it's, it's quite drab so that's going to be one of the first things we want to actually tackle so before we move on I'm just going to get rid of some of this other visual clutter off the screen as it could be confusing for people that should do I've just minimized those for now and move them to one side and we're going to be working now mainly on this image so uh, what I want to do is pump up the saturation just a little bit but I don't want it absolutely everywhere on the image I'd really rather focus just on the galaxy so range masks that's what we're going to use for this you'll notice if you try to color mask at this point one of these right here because there's so little color in the image they won't work too well just yet so if we open up instead process mask generation and range selection make sure this image is selected open a preview window by selecting on the uh, the little circular icon and you'll notice you've got a completely white screen nothing's gone wrong it, it should look like that if you start dragging across the lower limit you're going to start to see what's happening so we're picking out just that galaxy now and that background um, kind of extension uh, that's, that's occurring from the edge of this um, particular galaxy if we turn on screening you can look through the mask at the kind of what's going on behind and you can really pay uh, attention to what it is that you're actually masking out that looks pretty good I do want to smooth it out just a bit though so I'm going to use the smoothness slider and as you can see the effect that that's having it's changing those transitions from being completely like hard edged which would be insanely easy to detect if let's say if I used that to apply my uh, saturation to this image if I instead use smoothness it's going to soften out all of those transitions from the unmasked to the masked areas and make any uh, kind of saturation adjustments like this that much less jarring visually uh, as your eyes are really good at picking up things like that so I want a range mask like that for now so I'm not I'm not actually gonna close the range mask tool just yet because I'm gonna make another one excuse me for another reason in just a moment but you should have something that looks a little bit like this we've got the outline of the galaxy and the nearby dust and we can go ahead and just drag and drop that right below the identifier of the main image and as you can see all the background has gone red the main galaxy largely appears to be left alone and that's exactly what we're looking for so uh, right let's move on now so with the main image selected I'm gonna open up curves at this point because it's uh, saturation that I wanted so we'll click on the saturation part of the window and open up a preview and if we just demonstrate now with a big adjustment you can see that starts to pump some life into it going the opposite way would bring it back to being monochromatic but the important thing is as well we've left the background completely completely alone as uh, there's nothing really less visually appearing uh, appealing than a really mottled uh, deeply colored background when it should just be kind of a gray or a black now it's important to note that if you let's say you place this and you don't want it somewhere you can right click and get rid of the pips and you don't have to make your adjustments all in one big gigantic leap uh, instead what I'd prefer to do uh, if I'm not in a rush is I'll take a few kind of pokes at it I'll just kind of move it up a little bit like this as you can see the effect that that's having it's breathing a little bit of life into this galaxy in, in one step right there so I'm gonna go ahead and apply that 
And you can see the preview has now changed. It's updated to reflect that we would have another step available to us. And I think the data can more than support that extra step. So I'm going to take it. But I think that third one, it's not quite there yet. Um, it looks like doing that particular processing step would change everything to being a purple and kind of off color. It doesn't look right for a galaxy. You'll probably note that on this data, we haven't had to do any uh, photometric color calibration, background calibration, or anything like that. That's actually, in my experience, fairly common with LRGB data. As long as you uh, kind of process it right from the get-go, you'll find it often appears after LRGB combination pretty well color calibrated anyway. Um, if you wanted to run PCC on your own data, you absolutely could at this point. Uh, it's just you'd also most likely have to run an SCNR afterwards. As I kind of touched upon in the first tutorial there, but I don't think this needs it. I'm happy with the colors of the galaxy, except for I think the fact there's a slight little bit too much uh, red in there, pushing things towards being purple. So to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to falsely push up the preview uh, saturation right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and adjust the blue channel. I want to pump a little bit more blue into this image. Just a little bit, mind. And a little bit more green too. So you can see that's bringing that back to a more, I think, the more satisfying natural color. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that saturation back down ever so slightly to somewhere more reasonable. I think around about there looks pretty good. On my monitor, uh, it's pretty well calibrated, so I can generally trust it. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. I think that next step would be too far, so I'm going to reset the tool completely and maybe make one more final slight saturation adjustment as uh, I think the data really can take it. It's pretty nice overall, even though it wasn't that much integration time and from Ball 7 Skies. Uh, hopefully that little segment there has given you some idea of the, for want of a better word, the subtleties of the curves tool that you can kind of manipulate the data in lots of interesting ways without it actually being that difficult or that time consuming. Um, if you just experiment, you're not going to damage your data in any way. And if you understand, you know, how colors combine and wh which colors maybe you'd need to increase or decrease to balance your image visually yourself, it, it really is a time saving tool, I find, as well as being incredibly satisfying to use. Now, I think the Galaxy itself could stand just a little bit more sharpening, especially along the brighter parts uh, of these spiral arms here. So I'm going to use the Mask generation tool once again, as I said. So range selection. Got the main image selected once more. Going to open a preview. And I'm going to drop down this smoothness so I can actually see what I'm doing. And at this point, instead of going for kind of like the whole galaxy selected, I'm going to move this lower limit across to the right. So as you can see, as I move it across and across and across, we're selecting less and less of the image, representing only the very brightest parts of this galaxy that we've got selected right now. So... In this case, somewhere around about there looks pretty good to me. So we've got the, the parent galaxy, the second one that's been kind of consumed by this whirlpool and all the brightest parts. So the core and the kind of ridges along the spiral arms. That's what we want selected. I am going to smooth it out just a little bit at this point. So I think that looks pretty good. Again, this is going to smooth any transitions uh, that are going to appear in the sharpened parts of the image to the non-sharpened parts and it'll make it that much more visually appealing you can simply drag and drop that over to the main image and as you can see it's had the desired effect once again so i i am gonna excuse me at this point i'm going to use quite a heavy handed sharpening tool so i'm going to go to process convolution and i'm going to use an unsharp mask this is a uh, it's like attacking it with a hammer, but it does work, uh, I find. So uh, if you open up the preview window, you can see there's a little square icon right there. If you select that, you can then, by holding down left click on your mouse, drag a selection window over a particular part of the image that you might want to be paying special attention to, like this. And by cycling back and forth on the preview, you can see the effect that we're actually having. So just at defaults, Unsharp Mask there has actually made a really nice change to that image. If you can see the galactic core 
and all that kind of um, kind of croggly detail for want of uh, the correct word is actually appearing really nicely sharpened. It's 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 a powerful effect, but it's also quite subtle because of how we've applied it. Uh, it's been masked out and it's not allowed to kind of run rampant throughout the whole image where it'd be taking over stars and things like that. So again, this is one of those things where quite simply, you're probably not going to get it right the first few times that you do it, but keep at it, keep practicing uh, and you will get a feel for what parts of the image could stand more sharpening, I think. So I'm going to go ahead with that. I happen to like the effect just one more time, as you can see, it is sharpening that core nicely and also the secondary uh, part of the galaxy there that's getting a nice effect so i'm gonna go with that and at this point we can get rid of the sh masking tool uh get rid of the mask itself from the image and we're largely left with a completed image at this point um any other final things you could do i guess if you liked you could pass it through noise exterminator or easy denoise again even though you shouldn't really use it on non-linear data it does still work quite well uh, i've experimented around with it a lot over the years and found that it does work even on uh, on non-linear data um and i think any final adjustments now would just be tiny little maybe curves adjustments maybe a little s overall so we'll just demonstrate that real quick so i'm opening up the rgbk part of the window i'm just going to push the midtones up slightly and drop the shadows ever so slightly and it'd have that kind of effect of making the galaxy leap out just a little bit more. And I think there's one final thing we can do, uh, just for the sake of demonstrating the power of these tools. Not that this image in particular needs star reduction, as I think the stars are quite attractive in this image as they are. But I will talk you through it all the same. So we're going to go through the process of star reduction. So that's drag clone for starless, this little tool over. It'll make a cloned image already pre-named as Starless. And at this point you want to drag either Starnet2 or Star Exterminator just onto that image. Okay, that's finished now. Uh, it hasn't taken very long at all. And we're left with two files, of course. One that's Starless and our main image. The one we actually want to apply this star reduction to. I'll quickly take you through method one, two, and three. You can dive into these a lot deeper if you would wish and start individually adjusting values. By all means, they'll just use them at the defaults, as I think they work really well at the defaults. Now, if we just try them in sequence, so method one, a little bit strong. I would say it's actually getting rid of some of these background galaxies and smaller stars in this particular image. Let's try method two. So the first thing I noticed, I guess, on method two is it has had a very nice effect on the stars, but it also kind of made the core of the galaxy there depress ever so slightly. Not ideal, nothing dramatic, but let's just try for the sake of it now, method three. And if my eyes aren't deceiving me, that one's more attractive. I would say that's the best of the three on this particular data set, but that's the importance of experimentation. I don't think there is any true one size fits all solution to everybody's data. You really do have to take a look and figure out what's working best for you. Uh, as I mentioned, I would probably not bother star reducing on this so I'd just leave it at that go ahead hit file and save as whatever your chosen file type is and I'd uh, probably call it a day at that so I'm sorry if I've sped through this and uh, lost any of you guys along the way but for those of you who's made it this far in the tutorial I'd like to say thank you very much indeed for your time in watching this and I hope you picked up something or the other from this uh it's certainly a lot of fun to make these things and i hope that they do help people um anyway with that said that's about everything so thank you very much to everybody for all your support be it directly through patreon youtube memberships liking the video or just watching them and commenting it all makes a huge difference and thank you all so much for the part that you play in helping this thing grow because i really do enjoy myself doing it so with that said until next time, guys, look after yourselves and clear skies.